I think it's cat food. Maybe I should taste it. Hi guys, if you don't know me, my name is Priya and I basically make a fool of myself on the internet and today's video I think is going to be very interesting because first of all, I'm taking my first trip since the beginning of this pandemic so that's one and second, I'm taking my first solo trip in over three years so for my comeback in the solo trip universe I wanted to go somewhere that I know already so I'm going to Budapest yes again I know I just love it there I don't know what can I say I don't have to justify myself who are you the police <laughs> I'm going to try to plan this trip the best that I can because I don't want to have any issues over there but you can go on a solo trip and everything is going to be 100% perfect something has to happen I've already had a little bit of a, of a slight little problem on the way here the train was 25 minutes late because of a gas leak so basically i could have been deceased right now and the second thing is that i was very interested in seeing how would airline companies airport how do we adapt to this situation and i was surprised to see that everything looks smooth you have to wear a face mask in the airport i don't know if those are compulsory in the plane up until yesterday you needed to use hand sanitizer at least three times before coming to your gate it's not compulsory anymore but it is advised and it is free so i don't know why you would not use that and this airport is a small one but normally at the end of the month of june it is jam-packed and today i mean if we say that we're 25 people it's already a lot i mean i think i I overestimated the numbers. It's empty, the shops are closed. Some people have their body temperature checked. Hey, Priya from the future here. I was actually mistaken and every single person got their body temperature checked. It was done on a big white screen and it was really quick and easy that I didn't even notice. I thought that the airport wanted to film us for some reason because I guess I'm so used to get filmed and to film myself. And the people whose body temperature were over 38 degrees Celsius got their temperature checked again individually with a thermometer so that's it back to the video and lockdown has been lifted both in Brussels and in Budapest but I think it's going to be very interesting to see the differences between those cities and how they both are overcoming this situation because there, there's been a huge pandemic but also an economic crisis so I'm going to see the different measures they have taken in Budapest maybe in Budapest you don't have to wear a face mask in, in public transportation maybe I don't know so I'm very excited I hope I'm going to meet new people over there because I have booked a bed in a 12 bed dormitory so I should meet a few people <sighs> I can't wait so stay tuned I have landed and before you come my banana just know that she has traveled more than you in 2020 so she's not the one to pity I think and after more than seven hours of wear I can finally take this off okay now I'm gonna take the shuttle bus I mean just by looking at my face you can realize how rough this journey was for me and I had a nice nap for one hour and a half in the plane so that's why so something had to happen right I went over to my hostel and when I got in front of it I saw that there was construction work so I was like well I need to sleep somewhere somehow right then I saw a sign and I had to walk to another hostel where my reservation was sent to and now I'm here but the good thing Thing is I had booked a bed in a mixed dorm with 12 beds and now I'm in a female dorm with only eight beds so it's going to be better and and the other nice thing is that because people are still a little bit afraid to travel I'm alone at least for tonight the guy said I don't think I'm going to do anything much because I've been I have started this journey this morning at 9 a.m. and now it's 5 so I'm super super tired so I'm going to start visiting Budapest tomorrow and I can't wait so yeah see you tomorrow I'm afraid this video is going to be pretty long but I don't really care because this video I'm doing mainly for me because this is my first solo trip in over three years as I have said and everything I'm experiencing I want to remember so I have been editing all evening and just chilling eating pizza watching a few videos on YouTube we were only five people in the hostel but as the hours went by people started singing and playing the guitar and talking with each other and the men at the front desk it's 
is super talkative it's amazing in normal conditions this hostel it would have been the heart of the party because it's a party hostel so everyone that comes here is willing to talk with people party have fun so it's super super nice and i'm actually not alone in the dorm so there's another girl she's from germany i've always heard that germans are not that friendly with strangers but she started talking to me right away and tomorrow she is meeting with friends from Argentina so she invited me to join them so I think I'm going to join them and also I'm super happy to not be like the only one in the hostel because that would have felt like like the movie Shining and I'm not real about that life I already have nightmares of single night so I don't need that I'm very sorry for the length of this video um, but at the same time I'm not if you stop watching, I wouldn't mind because I think this video is great. And at the end of the day, I'm filming, I'm editing, I'm not earning anything from this. So if this video pleases me, then I have won. Now, for real, I'm not going to film anymore for today. I'm going to finish the video that I was editing and then I'm gonna go to sleep. Tomorrow I'm going to try to wake up early to join this group. Also, also, I need to stop doing something. I need to stop asking people their name and then not listen to the name because I have no idea what her name is. So I have to ask it again and maybe again and again and again. Embarrassing. Okay, see you tomorrow. Okay, it's not even 11 a.m. and I'm already ready to go. Who would have thought right? Oh, it's filming. <laughs> I can't jump higher than this, so it's going to be too far, okay? <laughs> I'm now at the Fisherman Bastion and I have never seen this place that empty. It's, it's crazy. Honestly, for the first time, I'm going to have my perfect pictures and it's 26 degree I'm not going to complain though but it, it's hot it's hot hot and now we're doing a photo shoot <laughs> apparently it's common in Argentina what's it called it's also called mate but you can also call it porongo and then you do the following and what's the difference with matcha then I don't know what is matcha so <laughs> I can't go oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> and this is common yeah Really, really common. Everyone oh, it. I knew I was going to love meeting Argentinian. <laughs> I knew it. And there's hot water in this uh, bottle. Yeah, there's hot water in that one, but you have to prepare it with cold water or warm water. Okay. Yeah. And everyone else is exhausted by this. <laughs> it's like you have to prepare a dam. with a sherma that's already humid, it's like wet. You're making a tutorial how to, how to make mate. <laughs> I'm not the best one at this, so <laughs> don't use me as a guide. Then you put this inside, and now you have to start pulling the hot water. Not feeling that heavy. The first one is the worst one because it has like the mixture between the cold water and the hot water. So the first one, the one who prepares it is the one who has to drink it so that the other ones don't have to oh, Okay, 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 I get it. Thank you for sharing! <laughs> and now after one hour of rest we're going to the Buddha castle and this is actually the girl's first time in Budapest and so this is Christina from, from Germany I, I have been rude I didn't introduce you this is Sofia from Argentina and Catalina from Argentina as well <laughs> and now after Buddha castle I think we're gonna get uh, something to eat and then what are we going to do? I forgot um, I'm not sure. I think we're gonna go watch the sunset. At oh, yeah, the castle. from the from the Fisherman yeah. Bastion. Yeah, yeah So that's a nice plan for a first day Definitely. Stay tuned
and also after my third time in Budapest I have finally found still water I don't know what is up with Eastern Europe and sparkling water but I hate it and finally I have found this which is still finally because in Brussels at least if you want to have still water it's going to be blue and if you want sparkling it's going to be red here the pink one is still okay it doesn't make any sense yeah okay stay tuned it's 10 p.m we just ate and now we're back on the fisherman bastion the buddha castle everything to enjoy the beautiful view here budapest is really beautiful at every hour of the day and every hour of the night it's mwah. and i have just eaten like i mean it not even like a pill like worse than a pill i can't even walk and i don't know if it's because of the, the, the temperatures change or something but i'm cold and last time i was here whew, i just tripped last time i was here it was in november so it was dark at 4 p.m basically and now it's normal it's 10 and but the day isn't even over you guys i'm getting old i'm tired my thighs have been chaffing is that a word my thighs have been rubbing against each other for 10 hours now and I, I'm not going to show them to you because this video is going to get demonetized. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not monetized yet. They're sore. My thighs are, are sore and the day's not over because now we're going to the ruin bar. So yeah, I think that's it. I'm not gonna lie, it feels a bit weird to travel at the moment because everything is just empty. I have never seen this place like this. Normally, you can't even walk without bumping into other people and don't even think about taking pictures without having people in the shot and now there's no one it feels it feels even weirder because during the day so there was us and other people but now it is just us it's very weird i'm not used to travel like this i'm not gonna lie it's a nice experience because it's as if i have this city all by myself and if it was normal i would love it because i i would love to have a city just for me you know just my private little city and i know that this has such a terrible impact on the economy i feel a bit guilty to come but at the same time i feel very safe I don't know it's just different here. Less people are wearing masks. The situation has been handled differently. So it's very different. But I like it. But at the same time, I'm kind of scared, you know? I'm happy to have found a group because I wouldn't have liked to be alone. Like, very alone. <laughs> And also the borders have opened last week and I would have expected more people to travel because I know that I have missed this so so much and I knew that some people would still be afraid to travel which I can of course understand but I didn't know that there will only be this many tourists and by this many I mean 10 <laughs> But at the same time, I chose to travel during a global pandemic. So what did I expect, right? Honestly, my stomach hurts. I have eaten way too much. I shouldn't eat. I mean, I'm 24. I should know my limits, but I don't, I don't think I ever will. And now I just don't feel so good. I think I'm gonna hide in a corner and fart and blame it on the statues. I can't even blame it on other people. But that's a disadvantage of traveling during a pandemic. When you fart, you can't blame it on other people. Okay. Can you see those people? Can you see the people? What about social distancing, huh? What about this pandemic? What about our girl, Rona? Did you all forget about her? Well, I'm talking, but I'm traveling in the middle of a pandemic but i mean come on come on shaking my head day two christina and i are going to the great market hall which is just in front of us just as beautiful as i remembered we're going to meet with the girl catalina and sofia and then we're going to have lunch i have just had breakfast not gonna lie it's 12 i don't care um and i am going to i don't have any plans yet but stay tuned hey <laughs> Hi, Hi. Hi. Yeah, yeah, fine. I mean, I know I've said this a dozen times yesterday, but look at how empty this is. Honestly. Thank 
you music thank you music last time i was here i forgot to buy a set of cups and i wanted to come back here just to buy those cups and i feel really privileged saying that but because of lady rona the oh the, the second floor yeah so the second floor is closed so i'm sad because i wanted to get magnets from here and also my thighs are really sore this is the place we're going to have lunch to and honestly it looks amazing if you put flowers anywhere i'm here see it's the cutest place ever <gasps> Wow. Mm -hmm. It looks nice. Yeah, I know. You can say the same thing for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to visit the synagogue of Budapest, but unfortunately, it has not opened back up yet. One thing I don't understand is that I have seen an open-air party yesterday but somehow visiting a synagogue is not allowed! It doesn't make sense to me But anyways So we went to this coffee place with the girls before they take the train It's called Zoska We ordered pancakes and Catalina orders muesli and look Oh, the lady said it was this big, you know But this is huge, my friends! <laughs> And this looks also very nice and I got a nice coffee to go with it and it cost me four euros so very very nice my new Argentinian friends brought me to their hostel before they leave and look at the view from the room it's amazing Incredible, I like, I love. The group left, they have taken the train. I'm super happy to have spent two days with them. I was hoping to meet new people, but I didn't know it would come that fast into the trip, AKA in the minute I entered the hostel, it was great. And now I'm going back to the hostel. I'm going to meet with Christina because she is in the hostel already. She's leaving tomorrow morning, unfortunately. So I have two full days by myself. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. But I'm sure something fun. Maybe I'm going to just go shopping and enjoy the weather. You know, maybe just sit in a park, watch a show. It's just, it's all about the simple thing. I don't need to do crazy things to feel like I'm living a nice holiday. So yeah, I think that's it for today. Probably not, but maybe. So yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. I have had the best talk with the girl from the dorm her name is stephanie with stephanie and christina we're going to go to the green bar because this is their last night so we're going to have a nice talk have nice drinks and yesterday we went to the green bar as well but my camera had no battery anymore so now is the perfect day because i'm going to show you i'm going to film the place and show you how empty it was if you remember budapest and the shots i have taken in november you can see how crowded the place was and now it's empty and the shishas are free because of the reopening of the bar so that's also amazing stay tuned Day three, Christina and Stephanie left early this morning at 6 a.m. And I've also had a super long and lazy morning because now it is 3 p.m. and I haven't left the hostel yet. But I think that is something that should be discussed because I was talking about it yesterday night with Stephanie and she was telling me that she had been traveling for a week now and she said, well, tonight I don't feel like going out, I just feel like sleeping. And I told her that it was completely normal and I think that was the first time that someone had told her that. And she said that she felt relieved because she thought she was the only one and I know what it's like because I've been through it before. It's not because you are traveling that you need to be actively traveling all the time. And it doesn't matter if you're traveling for four days or four months, you, you are allowed to have days off from your travels. I know it's not the same thing for everyone, but the way that I travel, 
it is exhausting you wake up early in the morning you walk all day for the for example the first day that i was here i walked 30,000 steps i think that's 25 kilometers it's not something you can do every single day for months and even not for days this is not resting so i'm allowed to have days off from my travels and i think that should be normalized because i feel like no one is discussing about it because i've had it at first i thought that i was so lucky and so privileged to even afford to travel that much yet i take days off when i travel and you know and i used to feel guilty about it but i shouldn't i shouldn't feel guilty about it because if i had pushed myself this morning I wouldn't have enjoyed it because I would have been tired my feet would have hurt and my thighs are still recovering from day one so it wouldn't have been nice so I don't see the point in pushing myself and pushing my body and my mind just to not feel guilty about something that I have been working for so now it's 3 p.m. I still have all afternoon and all evening to do what I want to do today and I still have plenty of time. It's not like time is running out. I still have time to do what I want to do. So I'm going to go to the House of Terror. I don't know anything about it. I don't know what it is about, but I'm very interested in seeing what it is about because this place was recommended to me many, many times. I read that you needed to wear a mask inside a house of terror, which makes sense depending on how it is organized, but I don't know anything about it, so we're just going to see. Stay tuned. I have been looking for baby powder for two days now because my thighs are really rubbing against each other the first day they bled but i couldn't seem to find any but now i have entered a store who looks like a pharmacy so i think they should have baby powder right it would be a huge relief i don't know if that's too much to ask i would like to walk today oh, okay i mean they should have baby powder in the baby shelf right the thing is if i don't find baby powder here I don't think I'm going to find it anywhere else, but I didn't know it was a rare item. We have baby powder at my house, but I don't remember ever buying baby powder. I mean, do you guys remember ever buying baby powder? Or is it just lying around your house for the past 15 years? There is none. Well, my suffering is my fate now. I'm going to be brave. I don't have the choice. Pray for me if you believe in God. Or in any goods. I don't care. I just want my thighs not to be so big. Maybe I should work out. Or maybe you should mind your own business. Okay, I am on a very, very busy avenue, so I hope you can hear me. The House of Terror was very interesting. You couldn't take any pictures or film inside the museum but it's very interesting i'm going to read it to you because i don't want to make any mistakes so it was the house of the hungarian arrow cross party and it's known as the house of loyalty and it was the party headquarters they tortured a lot of people they sent a lot of people to the gulags they recreated the, the prison cells they recreated a lot of things they interviewed many many survivors so you can watch that on screens it's very interesting to see so if you have the chance just go there and the thing is i didn't want to leave budapest without having langosh again and if you remember from my previous vlog langosh is a deep fried dough topped with sour cream and cheese so I opened Google Maps and what do I see? I saw that there's a place called Langos Papa where you can have a starter, a regular salty langos and a sweet langos for dessert for 3,000 forints, which is about 9 euros. So it's very nice. I can't seem to find it, but I think I passed it. Apparently, oh, I passed it or not. Yeah, I passed it, okay. I don't know, it's supposed to be here. Maybe it's closed. I'm going to ask someone. 
can't wait. I'm drooling already. Hi, do you speak English? Yeah. Can you tell me where the place Langos Papa is? I don't know if you know the place. Yes. Uh, I can't seem to find it's it. It's in this side. Okay. About five it's, minutes later. It's on the side. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. I hope it's not closed because now I really want to have that long wash. After 15 minutes of searching for the place with an empty stomach, I ended up finding it. I had to cross the street and it's in front of me. But, of course, I mean, I'm not even surprised, you know. It's closed, so that is great. I'm starving. I wasn't even hungry. But once you get the idea in your head that you're gonna eat something good, then you start to feel hungry. But now I'm not just hungry, I'm hangry, I am mad. I'm gonna go to McDonald's to have sweet potato fries, I think, because I have been craving those for a long time now. Also, can I say one thing? Why is it that on Google Maps, it was written that it was open, and when I got in front of it, I saw that there was construction work? How hard is it to have your information verified? How hard is that? Come on. I can't even... Okay, I'm mad. Honestly, I would not recommend Google Maps now. I'm sure because of this video, Google Maps is gonna, is gonna lose uh, many, many users, and I'm not even sorry. The one thing I wanted from McDonald's was sweet potato fries, and look. I already sanitized them, I think, four times in, a, in the last hour, but you can never be too cautious. Did you sanitize your hands? Every time I come here, I have to make a stop at McDonald's because of how cheap and different and tasty everything is. I love blessed. You know, I was thinking about the fact that all I did on day three was visit the House of Terror and walk around the city. And I know some of you guys may think, well, there's no need to travel, you could do that at home, you can walk around the city of Brussels, and in a sense, yes, I agree with you, but for me, it's very, very different. And for me, there is peace in walking around a city you don't really know. It's almost as if here, I could be anyone. In Brussels, it's not as if everyone knew me, but I have my life there, my family, my friends, People have a certain image of me. Some people may see me as the fun friend. Some people may see me as the girl who doesn't drink alcohol. Some people can see me as the girl who makes vlogs. But here, no one knows me. And that feels very liberating for me. And the mere fact that I have spent the evening just walking around Budapest with music in my ears, it felt good i felt free i can't even begin to tell you how happy i am to have booked this trip and to have booked it alone and also everything well i'm going to touch wood everything went amazing everyone has been so nice to me i didn't have any trouble at all i met amazing people and for me it's crazy because i know that sometimes you can hang out with people for years but not click and sometimes you meet someone for two hours and you just click and both times i traveled alone it happened to me both times for example yesterday I met Stephanie and we spent I don't know three hours together and she's from Austria and she said well if you ever come in my town you can sleep on my couch it was crazy because I know that if she ever comes to Brussels in Brussels she can come over at my place as well and that is so weird because I know some people for years and years and I've never been to their place but a girl I didn't know the existence of a couple of hours ago invited me to sleep in her house. And that is just the magic of traveling. You, you meet so many like-minded people and when you like to travel as much as I do, sometimes you feel alone because you feel like no one shares this passion as much as you do. And sometimes when you talk about it, you feel like you're boring them. But then you travel and you meet other people who like 
traveling as much as you do and you're like oh you do that too I thought I was the only one and it's just amazing because you don't feel alone when you travel and that's a thing that I want you to understand is that it's not because I travel solo that I'm lonely there's a big difference and sometimes I feel more alone in a room full of people that I don't vibe with than when I travel alone. There's a very big difference. Today was my last full day here. I can already say that this trip brought me everything I hoped for and so much more. And I hadn't felt so happy in months. In months. I, I don't know. I can't even begin to tell you how much I loved this trip in particular. And I hope this video does it justice, but I don't think it will. I don't think it will. But I'm so, so happy. I'm so happy. Now I'm going to hang out in the hostel, talk with a few people. So I think it's going to be it for today. I'll see you tomorrow for the last and final day in Budapest. I really hope you're enjoying so far. See you tomorrow. So it's 11 p.m. and I was making myself a late dinner and I went back to my room to go grab the camera because of one reason only. I opened a can of tuna because this is what I eat. I love tuna. But then I put it in my bowl and I think it's cat food. I'm going to show you. I don't know if I should eat it. Have you ever seen tuna that look like this for humans? You won't focus, but it's it looks like regular tuna for humans. Maybe I should taste it. The tiniest bit. No, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know if it's because I suspect it to be cat food, but the taste is not... I don't like it. No, no, I'm going to throw it away. I don't know. I've never seen tuna that look like this for human beings. I'm not, I'm not eating that. I mean, it's stuck in my trachea and it tastes disgusting. You know the, the power of the mind? I think if someone had given that to me without uh, without showing me how it looks like, I would have eaten it. But now that I see it, I can't. I'm very sad because first of all, I spent 300 points on it, which is the astronomical sum of one euro. But second of all, I, I really wanted to eat tuna fish. So me and my chains are telling you goodbye for now. Good night. Be careful when you go grocery shopping in another country. Don't buy cat food. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, I know I said goodbye, but I have the proof that the FBI is listening to me. I never talk about Thai chai feng, right? Because why would I? And now I've been talking about it for three days. I opened Instagram. What do I see? Say bye to Thai chai feng. Say goodbye to Thai robot. I mean, really, you couldn't make it less obvious, a little less obvious? For real though, I log in and I say this, come on. Day four, today the weather is very hot and heavy. I think it's the hottest day so far. It's 28 degree at only 1 p.m. Now I'm going to make a stop at the Hungarian National Museum before getting back to the hostel at around 3.30, something like that to get back to the airport. So this is going to be my last stop of this trip. And yesterday was a bit weird because I think I was the only guest in the whole hostel. So it was just me and the staff. And I had the whole dorm to myself. It looked like the, <laughs> a ghost hostel. Okay, and the great thing about this hostel is that the location is amazing and you can reach the main attractions by foot which I like because then I don't have to pay for public transportation so let's go so this is what it looks like from the outside of the museum it has a garden surrounding it and just like everywhere else in Budapest it is spotless and super pretty but you can see that there are people working very hard on the garden so I can't wait to see what the museum looks like inside i'm very excited i mean come on they put lights like traffic lights in front of the entrance well it's green so i can go it's the funniest thing
so you have to wear a mask and use hand sanitizer when you enter the museum and it's super cheap i paid 2100 for it which is about six euros more or less and i paid a little extra 800 for it's extra because i wanted to take pictures inside of the museum and i took the best decision ever because it is so magnificent and it's empty and I feel like I'm the only one visiting the place. I can hear people's voices, but from far away. I didn't know what to expect, but I sure wasn't expecting this. It is so gorgeous. And this amazing, amazing painting shows the siege of Buda Castle in 1686. And honestly, it's... It's a shame because the video doesn't do it justice. I think I'm going to do close up. Yeah. It's gorgeous. I love it. I love this museum. And here is one of the most beautiful tapestry I've ever seen depicting the recapture of Buddha. Are you surprised if I tell you that I would like to have a tapestry like this in my home? It's so pretty. I like it. It's so extra. But so am I. I don't know what that is. In French, lapide means stone. Someone to death. Tombstone. I think that's it. I think those are all grave monuments. Yeah. See? Tombstone, yeah. But just imagine how weird it must have been for them. I mean, for their spirits, obviously. Imagine you're dead for 2,000 years. You're just chilling in your grave, and then someone take your tombstone and put it in a museum? I mean, what if the tombstone was their blanket? Now they're cold forever. It always disturbed me that people could take tombstones. Death is supposed to be sacred. I'm not really comfortable in a room full of tombstone. I don't want to be cursed. I have my own issues. I don't need a curse on top of everything. I'm leaving this place. So now I'm going to drink this iced coffee and then get back to Boston. I'm sad to leave. And I'm not afraid to go back in Brussels with forens in my pocket because from the pattern that I have been seeing, I can make the deduction that I will come back. So I will spend that money later when I come back eventually in six months. <laughs> The weather though, it is heavier than a pregnant elephant. I love it. <laughs> it is 33 degrees right now. It's insanely hot. And when I exited the museum, I received a wave of hot wind. And for a second, I felt like I was in Bangladesh. Honestly, this is probably one of the most beautiful museums I have ever visited in my life. My favorite one is Galleria Uffizi in Milan. But I think this is the second one. It, it was beautiful, really worth it. And it is separated by centuries and every single room represents a different century. And it is very well organized. Every information about the things you can see, you can find in English as well. Next to the Hungarian part, so it is great. I'm out of breath. Ah. You know, I love many, many things about Budapest and that's the reason why I keep on coming back. But this is one thing that I really dislike. Look, I'm here and I need to cross the street. And as you can see, there is no pedestrian thing. So what do I need to do? They function with tunnels here instead of pedestrian stuff. I know how you call it, okay? So this is the, the, the metro station, Astoria. I need to go down and cross. And somehow I always take the wrong exit. So see, those are the two exits. And somehow I always take the wrong one. So now I'm just gonna check on maps. I need to go on Karoli Creek. So it is this one. I, I wouldn't have guessed. It's so confusing. Just how hard is it to put pedestrian stuff? So you should come to Budapest because if that's the only thing that I don't like, it means that it's a pretty great city. It is even emptier than Charleroi Airport. 
Also, how weird is it that you have to respect social distancing in the airport, yet you can sit next to someone in the plane? That doesn't make any sense. This is a, a more open space than a plane. I'm about to take off. That's it for this week's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to drop a like and tell me in the comments down below what kind of video you would like to see next. If you like my blog personality, you can always subscribe. I post one video a week every Wednesday. So stay tuned for that. Bye! Bye.